Jeffrey Van Orden, uh, how important is NATO and what is the message that you're trying to convey this evening? NATO is vitally important. It is the backbone of our collective defence. It has been for the last 70 years and will go on being so. The United States is the indispensable partner for European allies and we must make sure the United States remains bound to the security of Europe and the device for that, if you like, is NATO. So nothing else is going to supplant it and what concerns me is that EU ambitions to create some sort of separate military structure undermines the undivided focus that ought to be devoted to revitalizing the NATO alliance. Is the current Brexit debate helping or hindering here? Um, of course, no one knows what the outcome of that debate is going to be. Uh, many are saying that, of course, it would serve uh, the interests of Western solidarity more if the United Kingdom were to remain within the European Union on its terms, because there are new terms that have been worked out. And the fact is, if the United Kingdom is not in the European Union, it cannot use its influence then to prevent this movement towards separate European structures, which would be very harmful as far as NATO is concerned. If the European Union wants to be helpful in security terms, it can do it using its soft power instruments. It should keep out of the military business. And I've been saying that consistently for many, many years. And some of this now is coming home to roost. Does the UK spend enough on defence? No. Uh, we're doing very well. Uh, in the sense that uh, we had downturns over recent years. Of course, a strong defence structure requires a strong economy. I think we should all understand that. Uh, Russia at the moment is outspending herself. She has a smaller GDP than the United Kingdom, but spending massively on defence. And we've seen where that got Russia in the past. So uh, the United Kingdom is one of the best uh, defence spenders and defence producers. We are one of the most capable powers in the world, one of only three or four powers with uh, global reach across the full spectrum of military capabilities. But we need to do more and we need to be an example to all of our European allies that they have to do more. Can I talk about the Eastern Partnership, the Eastern Borders? Should EU citizens be worried about the ambitions of Russia? Um, of course, when you say EU citizens, I see the citizens of our various countries. And some countries are closer to Russia and feel that influence more uh, intimately than others. Um, others are more concerned about what they regard as the most immediate threats, which seem to be international terrorism, random terrorism. Uh, all of that sort of thing. But if you live in the Baltics, if you live in Poland, uh, if you live in Bulgaria or Romania, then of course the Russian threat is a very real one. Uh, and therefore you need a strong NATO. Um, a NATO that not only has capability, but also the will to use that. So that is the message we need to send to the Russians. We don't want to create hostile barriers between the West and Russia. We've stretched out the hand in the past, and we need to do so again. But Russia needs to stop playing cowboys uh, and needs to get back into a rules-based international system once more. Final question. At what point will the Americans get fed up of NATO? Well, um, we don't know who will be the next president of the United States, but what we can say with confidence is whoever it is, is going to demand that uh, European allies do more. That doesn't mean the EU has to do more. It means Europe's, the European NATO allies have to do more. And if we want to ensure that America remains bound to the security of Europe, which has to be our greatest strategic interest, then we have to show that we are investing in our own defense and that we are capable of being reliable partners to the United States in the defense of the democracies.